But you're right in that a lot of times on parts that do have draft angle, we like to rely on datum targets to show us exactly where we want to fixture that part or probe it to establish the datums. Okay. All right. And of course, they don't have to be circular areas. They can be square areas or rectangular areas or oddly configured areas, anything you want. But this does escalate in complexity as we move along. I would like to show uh, page 148 is one of my p favorite pictures. Let's take a look at that. This is a part that I worked on for an unnamed, to be unnamed, automobile company at this point. Uh, you can see that this is an automobile panel. This is one of the panels that uh, you don't see when you walk into the showroom. And you can see that this is a big, floppy, twisted up panel. And we've tried to strengthen it up a bit by putting these ribs in here. So it's got some ribs in it. But this is a piece of sheet metal, and it is prone to a lot of flexibility and a lot of twisting. So we don't have just three points of contact to establish the stability of the prime rate datum feature on this one. We've got eight areas of contact, eight that are 25 by 25 millimeters. These little darkened in areas, every one of those, is a datum target. And what we did with this part was we flipped it over onto a plate that had eight little blocks on it, and we established the datum. Now, what we had to decide was whether we wanted the part to be checked while restrained or in the free state. And in that circumstance, we simply wrote a note. And you would have to have a note on this if you wanted to check it while restrained. We did. We had it in the general note column. I don't have it on this picture. But the note said to restrain it on those eight little blocks. And that's exactly how datum A was established. So you might say on a rigid part, if you had more than three points, it wouldn't touch all the points. On a flexible part, it might hit all the points, even if you had eight or 18. Um, just because it's so flexible. But it might not, and that's OK. I mean, any rigid part, if you took a rigid part and you laid it down on this table, only the high points would hit. And you say that's OK. It's no different for a flexible part sometimes. If all of the points don't hit or all the areas don't hit, sometimes that's OK with you. But when it's not OK, you need to say so and write a note that says to be inspected while restrained. And the better the note is on exactly how to restrain it, and the more that note reflects how the part functions, how it's restrained in the assembly, the better off you're going to be.